right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're going to be looking at part two of the respiratory system. Uh, last day we talked about the different parts of the respiratory system, structure, function. Now we're going to actually talk about the breathing mechanism. Okay, so let's get started with the big picture. What you're going to be getting out of today is two things. How we breathe, so how is air drawn into our lungs and how does it leave? And then also what are the uh, factors that control breathing rate? So here are the parts to know, so you can write these down. Uh, the vocabulary, we need to know what the diaphragm is. It's the muscle that is below the lungs, just at the bottom of the chest cavity, and the intercostals, which is basically the muscles in between the ribs. So anytime you're gnawing on pork, uh, pork ribs, you're pretty much eating their intercostal muscles. And the pleural membrane, which is pretty much just the membrane that surrounds uh, the lungs, and also uh, stretch receptors. Stretch receptors, we mentioned this already, uh, they're the ones that are able to tell our lungs to stop inhaling. And then also we have uh, chemoreceptors, which you should add here. Okay, and though that'll be a big one um, near the end of the video. Okay, uh, one thing quick about the pleural membranes, notice that you have two, and there's going to be a lubricant in between, so that when these lungs are inhaling and exhaling, and they're continually rubbing against the outer rib cage, uh, you want to make sure that that friction is not going to wear them out. Okay, so here's those intercostals. All right, so the breathing mechanism. So first of all, for inhaling, when we want to get air into our lungs so we can provide ourselves with nutrients, what happens is the intercostals uh, come out and the diaphragm contracts and pulls down. So what this does for us, it increases the volume of the chest cavity and what that does, when there's more volume, it causes the pressure to decrease. Since there's more room and less pressure, what happens is air from outside will enter. And that's strictly because of that difference in pressure. Pressure inside and outside, if you're not breathing, will be consistent around one atmosphere. As soon as you increase that volume, there'll be decreased decrease pressure and that air will come in. We call this creating negative pressure. Okay, so that's a term you'll need to know. Okay, so you can pause that and we'll move on to exhalation. So exhalation is just the complete opposite process. We want to be breathing out. We need something to push that air out of our lungs, get rid of the CO2. And the way that we do that, it's a passive process where we relax the intercostals and they start pushing back in. And then we relax the diaphragm and it pushes back up. What this does is it creates a positive pressure and it forces that air out of our lungs. So we decrease the volume by, by relaxing our muscles. And what that does is it increases the pressure and that forces the air out of our lungs. And we call this a positive pressure. Okay? So you can write that down, or pause it and write that down. And so here's the big one that a lot of people get confused on. It's how do we actually know when we actually breathe or not. So there's two things that are going to be conti contributing to our breathing mechanism, or our, sorry, I guess our breathing regulation, or our rate. And the first one we call it our central uh, chemoreceptor. And all a chemoreceptor is, is a receptor that's going to uh, check the differences in the chemical composition of the blood. So with the medulla oblongata, which is in the brain, what it does is it's going to detect levels, oh I can't spell, that's terrible, it's going to detect levels of CO2 and H+. This is the big kicker, the H+, as we're going to see in the next unit, if there's a lot of CO2, it's going to be the indicator that's going to tell us there's a lot of CO2 is a lot of H plus ions. So as soon as the medulla senses a lot of H plus ions, it sends a signal to the muscles of the lungs to start increase or to start uh, inhaling. I know it seems weird that we want to get rid of CO2, but there's no message to be sent to to not inhale. I guess the message not sending there is not inhaling. So the breathing mechanism is started or it'll start going a little bit faster to get rid of that CO2. The next one we have two types here. We have aortic arches and carotid artery. So this is peripheral which means the outside. So here's your aortic arch. It's at the top of the heart and then the vessels that are going to be taking blood uh, to the brain 
or to the head, it's called the carotid arteries, and the, there's these chemoreceptors on there as well. So what the aortic arch does, it detects changes in O2 and CO2, and when the carotid artery is looking for things, it's looking for O2, CO2, or pH, okay? And the main thing is that this peripheral is kind of takes a back seat to the central. This is the major detection is the medulla oblongata. Okay, so if there is a low shortage of at the medulla oblongata, that's going to be able to bypass anything else. Okay, so this is the big one. Okay, so again, when the, we have lower cases of CO2, or sorry, increases of CO2, a decrease in pH, or a decrease in O2, that's when these things are going to kick in and tell our lungs to start uh, the breathing mechanism more, more quickly. Okay, so just as a summary, we want to know what uh, the processes of inhalation, exhalation, exhalation, we also call that inspiration and expiration, and then also if just finishing off with the chemoreceptors, and basically how that leads to an increase of our breathing rate. Okay. So if you have any questions about that, if I was unclear on anything, uh, jot them down and we'll discuss them in class. Have a wonderful day.